G'day and salutations. Today's briefing, China Coast Guard, the second fleet, forces and locations. The China Coast Guard, or CCG, is a relatively new organisation, being formed in 2013 from the Maritime Branch of the People's Armed Police Border Security Force and the other maritime law enforcement agencies in China. In 2018, the CCG was transferred from civilian control of the State Council to the People's Armed Police, ultimately placing it under the direct command of the Central Military Commission, the CMC. The CCG is the Maritime Security, Search and Rescue and Law Enforcement Service branch of the People's Armed Police. The CCG's responsibilities include anti-smuggling, anti-piracy, maritime policing and ship inspections, patrol of territorial waters and disputed territories, fisheries protection, coastal security, search and rescue, and grey zone operations. This briefing will look at some of the Coast Guard's major platforms, the area of operations of each fleet, and some conflict points where Coast Guard vessels have been involved. At some stage during the briefing, please hit the like button, it really does help the channel grow, and hit the notification button so uh, you'll be notified when I do publish a new briefing. And a big thank you to all those who have already subscribed. Many will be familiar with the PLA Theatre Commands and the People's Armed Police Coast Guard, the PAPCG, fleet disposition aligns with those of the Navy's fleets. In the north, we have the North Sea Fleet headquartered in uh, Qingdao with area of responsibilities being the Bohai Sea and the Yellow Sea. Of note, the North Sea Fleet does have responsibility for the PLA's Central Theatre Command's coastal areas. The East China Sea Fleet, headquartered in Ningbo, responsible for the East China Sea and the Taiwan Strait. And the South China Sea Fleet, headquartered in Zhangjiang, responsible for the South China Sea. In terms of equipment, the Coast Guard operates 42 large cutters, patrol boat offshore with helicopter hangar. 49 other large patrol boat offshore vessels, but without helicopter hangars. 22 patrol craft offshore helicopter. Now these are the 22 former Navy type 056 Corvettes that don't have helicopter hangar, but have a helicopter pad. And another 29 large patrol craft offshore, giving around 140 vessels, each over 1,000 tonnes displacement. The Coast Guard also operates air groups consisting of the Y-12 surveillance aircraft, and Z9 and Z8 helicopters. Within the fleet's area of operations, there are some flashpoints where the Coast Guard has had encounters with other countries' Coast Guard or fishing vessels, including with Japan over the Senkaku Diaoyu Islands, with the Philippines over Scarborough Shoal, with Vietnam over oil drilling near the Paracel Islands, and with Indonesia over fishing near the Natuna Islands and more broadly throughout the Spratly Island group. These incidents mostly involve the use of water cannon, but also occasionally ramming. The largest vessels in the CCG are the four Shosha two-class cutters, which displace around 5,500 tonnes. They carry a helicopter, but no large calibre gun. And the two Jaltol class cutters, which displace 12,000 tonnes, which carry two large Z8 helicopters and are armed with a 76mm gun. These vessels have very good range and endurance. At the smaller end of the Coast Guard's ocean-going vessels are the former PLA Navy Type 056 Corvettes, 22 vessels in the Jiangdao class. Now the missile systems have been removed, but the 76mm gun is retained. They represent the largest single class of vessel in the Coast Guard's fleet. Other Navy ships that have been transferred to the Coast Guard include three Type 053 H2G Jiangwei-1 class frigates. On these ships, the twin 100mm gun has been removed, but they retain four 37mm guns and carry a helicopter. Between the large cutters and the former Navy corvettes are a wide variety of vessels which include 
The 6 Jal Duan class, which are Coast Guard version of the Navy's Type 054A frigates, armed with a 76mm gun and carrying a helicopter. They are around 1,000 tonnes lighter than the Navy version as a result of a number of changes, including no VLS and a modified hangar. And 9 Jal Jun class, which are armed with a 76mm gun, but no helicopter, and displace around 2,500 tonnes. Apart from helicopters operating from many of the vessels, even if they don't have hangars but only landing platforms, many vessels also operate small craft, either rigid hull inflatable boats or more substantial small craft that are launched over the side or the stern of the vessels. These are used both to deliver boarding parties to vessels and putting personnel ashore. The Coast Guard also operates two former Navy Type 072 landing ship tanks that have been modified, with one used as a hospital ship and the other as an island resupply vessel. Another maritime organisation, but separate to the Coast Guard, is the Maritime Safety Organisation, a government agency subordinated to the Ministry of Transport. It administers all matters relating to maritime and shipping safety and is not a paramilitary organisation. The MSA retains its safety and control remit something akin to a traffic police role, if you like, while the new Coast Guard concentrates on all other law enforcement and policing duties. There is also what could be called the Third Fleet, the People's Maritime Militia, a civilian organisation that supports the PLA Navy and the Coast Guard, including in intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance and island resupply, and is heavily involved in grey zone operations. In summary, the People's Armed Police Coast Guard, the PAPCG, is a large and well-equipped force, including some very large vessels, but not all of which are equipped with large calibre guns. And it is designed to work in close conjunction with the PLA Navy and the Maritime Militia. When it needs heavier support, the PLA Navy is called in. And when the Coast Guard's law enforcement remit is not needed, it supports the Maritime Militia in grey zone operations intervening if and when required. It is very active in maritime disputes in East Asia and being under direct CMC control likely means that any aggressive action it takes is approved at the highest level. That concludes today's briefing. Thank you for watching. Happy to take suggestions for future briefings from subscribers, so please subscribe, like and share. Until next time, Violet Arrow.